Section 8.5, Probability. The probability density function f of a continuous random variable capital X, a quantity whose values range over an interval of real numbers, is given by the probability of capital X being between a and b as the integral from a to b of f of x dx, where f is some positive function, and the integral of f from minus infinity to infinity is 1. So what we're saying is that we have this capital X which is a continuous random variable. It's just uh, possible outcomes of a certain event. So for example, if we have a stopwatch that goes from zero to 60 seconds, then capital X could be um, the possible values of stopping from zero to 60 seconds. So it could be 30 seconds, 45 seconds, or even 45 and a half seconds. Any continuous number between zero and 60 would be X in that case. However, the probability density function has a lowercase x. This probability uh, density function f acts on uh, just a regular independent variable in the real numbers that we're all used to. So that probability density function associated with the continuous random variable just talks about the probability of any of those events occurring, but the quantity lowercase x is a totally separate quantity than the uppercase x. So let's do uh, an example of this. Let's let f of x equal 0.006x times 10 minus x for x between 0 and 10, and f of x equals 0 for all other values of x. Let's verify that f is a probability density function. Well, in order to be a probability density function, we have to be positive for all values of x. So in this case, x is between 0 and 10. So if x is between 0 and 10, that implies that 0 0.006 times x times 10 minus x must be positive. So f is positive for all x. So we could say f of x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x. So now we need to check our other condition. This was the first one for a probability density function. Let's check that the integral is equal to 1 from minus infinity to infinity. Well, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx is, in this case, just equal to the integral from 0 to 10, because those are all of our possible x values here. From beyond 10 and below 0, there's nothing going, there's nothing happening. So we're integrating f of x, so that's 0.06 x times 10 minus x dx, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.06 times the integral from 0 to 10 of 10x minus x squared, when we distribute our x, which is then equal to 0 0.006 times 5x squared minus one-third x cubed from 0 to 10, which is 0 0.06 times 500 minus 1,000 over 3, which is 1. And it should make sense that we want the probability density function to be equal to 1 if you integrate over po all possible values of x, because probabilities in general for every single possible outcome should add up to 1. In our case, integrating the probability density function is what gives us possible outcomes. So for example, if I was look, going back to my example of the stopwatch, if I wanted the probability that the, the watch is stopped from, let's say, 0 to 60 seconds, I told you the stopwatch only goes from 0 to 60 seconds. So that means that if I were to integrate from 0 to 60 of some probability density function that corresponds to my outcomes, my continuous random variable, then I would expect that that integral from 0 to 60 was equal to 1. And if I thought that the probability was um, equal for stopping anywhere from 0 to 60, I would expect the probability from 30 to 60 to be equal to a half. In this case now, let's take a look at some possible outcomes for our continuous random variable. So we have the probability that capital X is between 4 
and 8. So that's just the integral from 4 to 8. Which is the 0 0.006 taken out times the integral from 4 to 8 of 10x minus x squared. And we get 0 0.006 times 5x squared minus one third x cubed from 4 to 8. So that's just 0 0.544. Phenomena such as waiting times and equipment failure times are commonly modeled by exponentially decreasing probability density functions. Let's find the exact form of such a function. Well, say you are waiting on hold, and you're waiting for an agent to answer your call. It's impossible that the agent will answer your call before the call is placed, so we would expect that if f of t is a probability density function, then it must equal zero if uh, time is negative. And it needs to be an exponentially decreasing function for all positive time, because eventually, you know, your call is going to be picked up. So how about we say it's some constant a times e to the minus ct, where c is some other constant for all positive values of t. So this will be our piecewise probability density function where a is some constant greater than zero and c is some positive constant as well. So let's um, try to figure out the values of a and c. We know that our integral of our probability density function must add up to one. So one must equal the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of t dt. So that means that if I split up my integral from minus infinity to zero to f of t dt and add that to the integral from zero to infinity of f of t dt, then I'll end up with an integral that's entirely zero because this is for negative time where f is zero. So I just end up with the second integral from zero to infinity. So that saves me a little work. So I know that that equals one. So now I know that from positive values of t, this is the integral of a e to the minus c dt. And that's equal to, by definition of improper integrals, the limit as some other variable, let's say x, because we're already using t, goes to infinity, where I replace infinity with that variable. And I keep integrating a e to the minus c t dt. So I take my antiderivative, I get that we're taking the limit of minus a over c. Because I pull up constant a, and then integrating e to the minus c dt means I have to divide by a minus 1 over c. You could do a little mental u substitution over there. Otherwise, convince yourself when you take the derivative here, the minus c will hop out in front and cancel with the minus 1 over c, and just leave you with e to the minus c dt e to the minus ct, and then you have the a. So let's evaluate that from 0 to x, and we get that this is the limit of a over c times 1 minus e to the minus cx. I use the minus to switch the order of substitution over here. So now there's no more minus over there. So then this just equals a over c, because when you take this limit, you get a really, really big number in a denominator because of this negative. So this thing goes to 0. So we just have a over c times 1. But follow these chain of equal signs all the way back. We started with 1. So 1 must equal a over c. So this implies a over c equals 1. So that means that a has to equal c. So now we have a better form for our 
exponentially decreasing probability density function. So f of t is equal to 0 if t is negative, and it's equal to c e to the minus c t if f is positive, if t is uh, positive. So that's pretty cool. We can actually do even better than this, though. But we need a new definition. In general, the mean of any probability density function f is defined to be mu. And it's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x times f of x dx. So we just throw an x in there. So let's find the mean of the probability density function for example 2. So we have mu equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of t times f of t dt because we use t instead of x. So as we saw before, that's just the integral from 0 to infinity of t times c e to the minus ct because our piecewise function was undefined for negative values of t. Well, it wasn't undefined. It was 0 for negative values of t. Um, so now we can do integration by parts, it looks like, because we have t times c to the minus ct, so that's a product. So how about we let u equal t and dv equal the rest, c e to the minus ct dt. And now we'll take the derivative, get du is equal to dt, and we'll get the antiderivative and get that v is equal to minus e to the minus ct. So now we have mu equal to this integral from 0 to infinity, I'm just rewriting it, of t c e to the minus ct dt. So that's equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to x of t c to the t c e to the minus ct dt. Let's see if I can make that e a little better. Not much better, but... And this is, by integration by parts, the limit of minus t e to the minus ct, because it's u times v. And then we evaluate it from 0 to x, and we subtract the integral of v du, but v is negative, so subtracting a negative becomes positive. And we get the integral from 0 to x of e to the minus ct dt. So this is equal to the limit of minus x e to the minus cx. So we plug in x and we add 1 over c minus e to the minus cx over c. Notice there's no contribution to zero, for 0 for this guy. So then, this is just 1 over c. So that's pretty cool. That means that the mean mu is equal to 1 over c. So I could rewrite that saying that c is equal to 1 over mu, or mu to the minus 1 power. So now, instead of writing c times e to the minus c t, I can replace c with the actual average or mean of the function. So we could say that f of t is equal to 0 if t is negative, but it's equal to mu to the minus 1 times e to the minus t over mu if t is positive. Suppose the average waiting time for a customer's call is to be answered by for a customer's call to be answered by a company representative is five minutes. Let's find the probability that a call is answered during the first minute, assuming that an exponential distribution is appropriate. So in this case, the waiting time 
is the continuous random variable. So that's our capital X. Our f of t is our probability density function that happens to um, be appropriate in this case according to this. So we have that the average mu is equal to 5 because the average uh, waiting time is 5 minutes. We also have that f of t is our exponential function, so that's 0 if t is negative, and it's uh, 1 over mu, so it's 1 over 5, or mu to the minus 1, so that's 0.2 times e to the minus t over 5 if t is greater than or equal to 0. So let's get the probability that capital T in this case is uh, between 0 and 1. So the probability that the time to get the call answered is answered during the first minute, less than or equal to 1 minute. Well, that's just the integral from 0 to 1 of our probability density function. So that's just the integral from 0 to 1 of 0.2 times e to the minus t over 5 dt, which is 0.2 times minus 5 times e to the minus t over 5, evaluated from 0 to 1. And we get uh, 1 minus e to the minus 1 fifth which is approximately 0.1813. So our probability that our call will be answered within the first minute is about 18%. Let's find the probability that the customer waits more than five minutes to be answered. So that's the probability that t is just bigger than five for capital T, our continuous random variable. So that's the integral from 5 to infinity of f of t dt, which is equal to the integral from 5 to infinity of 0.2 e to the minus t over 5 dt, which is the limit of our integral replacing infinity with x. So 0.2 e to the minus t over 5, and that's the limit of e to the minus 1 minus e to the minus x over 5, which is just 1 over e, because there's no x in there. and this guy just goes to zero as x goes to infinity, it becomes really big in the denominator. So that's approximately 0.368. So we could say that about 37% of calls will um, have to, callers will have to wait more than five minutes for their call to be answered. When random phenomena are modeled by a normal distribution, this means that the probability density function of the random variable x is a member of the family of functions f of x equals this mess. So it's 1 over sigma times square root of 2 pi times e to the minus x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. This positive constant sigma is called the standard deviation. And remember that mu is the mean. So the standard deviation measures how spread out the values of our continuous random variable x are. Let's do an example. The intelligence quotient IQ scores are distributed normally with mean 100 and standard deviation 15. So this figure shows the corresponding probability density function. Whenever you see this kind of bell curve shape like this, that's very typical of a normal distribution. So we want to see what percentage of the population has an IQ score between 85 and 115. So our average mu is 100. Our standard deviation sigma is 15. We want the probability of our continuous random variable capital X being between 85 and 115. 
So that's just the integral from 85 to 115 of 1 over 15 square root 2 pi times e to the minus x minus 100 squared divided by 2 times 15 squared dx. Now you should recall that even though e to the minus x squared is integrable, it has no elementary antiderivative. In other words, we can't integrate it with any technique that we've done so far. We can't express it in terms of any elementary functions that we've talked about. So we're going to need a calculator in order to try to approximate this integral. So how about we pull up uh, Wolfram Alpha really quick, and we will type in the integral of 1 over 15 times the square root of 2 pi. And we'll multiply that by e to the minus x minus 100 squared divided by 2 times 15 squared. So 15 squared is 225 times 2 is 450. So I'll just put in 450 to make this a little bit easier. And we want to make sure that we go from x equals 85 to 115. So it looks like our integral is about 0.68. So let's go back and put in 0.68. So that means that about 68% of the population has an IQ score between 85 and 115, which makes sense even looking from the graph. You look at the uh, area under the curve from there to there, and it looks like it's about 68% of the area. Let's see what percentage of the population has an IQ above 140. Well, that's the probability that capital X is greater than 140. So that's equal to the integral from 140 and on forever of 1 over 15 times the square root of 2 pi times e to the minus x minus 100 squared divided by 450 dx. So that's approximately equal to the integral from 140 to some cutoff because people stop having IQs above a certain amount at some point. So how about we say about 200 to be safe? Because very few people have IQs above 200. This shouldn't affect our value pretty much, uh, very much at all. And that way we can actually plug this into our calculator easily. So we get uh, still e to the minus x minus 100 squared over 450 dx. So we go back to our calculator. Let's change our limits from x equals 85 to x equals 140. And we'll change 115 to 200. So we get about 0 0.0038. So let's go and put that in. This thing is about 0 0.0038, which is about 0.4%. So we could say about 0.4% of the population has an IQ above 140.